What's going on, guys? Brian Rabbit here. Today we got a really cool interview from Jason Schreier of Kotaku with Luke Smith, the game director of Destiny 2. Now, there's a lot of great stuff in this interview. I definitely would recommend you go and click the link down in the description, listen to the full interview yourself, because the context of this interview is also very interesting outside of what actually gets said. Jason Trier, of course, is the guy who breaks all the news about Destiny and Destiny 2. He's the one who told us about the troubled development cycle of Destiny 1. He's the one who told us that Destiny 2 was going to get delayed before we knew it was going to get delayed. Luke Smith is now the game director of Destiny 2, but before that, he actually used to work at Kotaku and 1UP as a journalist. He knows Jason Schreer's job. He used to do it. So the interplay between Luke Smith and Jason Schreer, I think, is very interesting because you know that Bungie can't be happy about the stories that Jason has broken in the past and the fact that he is writing a book with a huge segment about the development of Destiny 1. So there's got to be some tension there, right? But Luke Smith used to do that job. He used to do literally that job. So he understands where Jason's coming from. It's a really interesting interview. Now, they talk about a ton of stuff that I'm not going to talk about in this interview. They talk about the development of Destiny 2, the Taken King, crunch time for developers, the management structure of Bungie and how it's changed since Destiny 1, a whole ton of stuff. I'm going to get to the highlights, uh, but I got to say it was a fascinating interview. Definitely check it out. And the, the subtext to the whole thing is actually really fascinating just in itself. So, Kotaku started off the interview by asking Bungie why they wouldn't be talking about the darkness at this event, meaning E3. And Luke Smith said, at a point, just totally candidly, we had no idea what it was. For a period, we were just going to lump all the races as the darkness, minions of the darkness. But that's not what the IP deserves. So what we're doing with Destiny 2 is deliberately telling a story about the light and what it means to be chosen. And as such, we're in the process of removing the term darkness from the game. Because when we are going to talk about the darkness next, we need to know what it is and have a plan for it. This was stunning to me. Uh, the fact that the darkness is so featured in Destiny 1 without ever revealing what it is, but talked about plenty... And the fact that Bungie actually had no idea what the darkness was, as, as well as players having no idea what the darkness was, I mean, it makes sense for sure, but the fact that there wasn't some story bible in the back rooms and the, in the basement of Bungie that had an explanation for the darkness, it was just this nebulous concept. Maybe there was a writer who no longer works with Bungie who kind of had an idea of what the darkness would be, but in Destiny 1, there was no real idea of what it was and that's shocking the next question was kind of a follow-up to that but also a reference to articles that jason schreer had written now we all know about what happened with the first destiny story and how it was taken apart dismantled and rewritten at the last minute but this time you've had the entire full development to work on the story luke responds by saying yeah We've had time, and one of the things we've been doing is looking ahead, beyond Destiny 2. One of the things that's really important about narrative is a feeling of progress, like as though the world is going somewhere, as though something is happening. And I think that is an opportunity that we haven't taken advantage of in Destiny to date with a sense of forward momentum. So that's something that is super important to us. Kotaku followed up by saying, that's a first for Destiny. No offense, that narrative is super important to you. Luke says, I think we've taken strides. And Kotaku says, you have. The Taken King had a solid villain and a solid story. But Luke goes on to say, but it still had the weakness of, but yeah, how does it all fit together? Now, this is very interesting as well, because the Taken King story was certainly a lot better than Vanilla Destiny's story. But if you really look at it, does it show forward progression for the Destiny story as a whole? And I think that's something that Luke Smith said Bungie is working on. They want you to feel like you're constantly working toward a larger goal than just the boss you're fighting or the raid you're doing, right? Is The raid is... 
the temporary step that you need to surpass to get, you know, into fighting the greater darkness, however nebulous that might be. I think it's really interesting that they're they're taking a look at the story after Destiny 2 and that Destiny 2 story is, you know, written with that in mind. Luke goes on to give an example uh, of what they're doing. At the end of Rise of Iron, when Lord Saladin was like, so you have risen up and become an Iron Lord, and when the last battle arrives, the Iron Lords will rise up and fight beside you, people would be like, what? There's going to be a last battle, and all these dead dudes are going to come back and fight with me? That's amazing. And if, in the subtitles, the last battle was capitalized L, capital B, People would be like, it's going to be awesome. This matters. The stuff I'm doing matters. I feel progress. We haven't provided that. We have to provide that. We're finally getting consistency of team, consistency of leadership. We're getting better at making destiny. So Luke Smith is acknowledging the reporting that I think Jason Shreer has done here uh, about the change-ups in... Bungie and the management of Bungie and how it really kind of messed with the storytelling arc of Destiny and he's letting Jason know that yes he's he's working to fix this and that going forward it's going to be all about consistency of team consistency of leadership he actually talks about this quite a few times during the full interview the next question from Kotaku is I've heard a lot of people voice that Destiny 1.5 opinion and to some extent I think it's valid. The races seem the same. You're fighting the Cabal with the same classes, even though the subclasses feel a bit different. But it also feels like you're iterating on the first game in a way that you are only able to do because you released the first game. So that may lead to some cool stuff. Smith responds, I do think of game two as a revision to the form. It's an iteration on the form. The opportunity is to open the game up to as many new folks as possible and give them the best version of Destiny we've made yet. So again, this is an interesting interaction between Schreer and Smith because Schreer is taking Smith to task about, you know, this does feel like a Destiny 1.5, and Smith does acknowledge that to some point. He wants to emphasize that there are a ton of opportunities to open the game up to new folks and give them the best version of Destiny we've ever made. It is still Destiny. It says Destiny 2, but it's still an evolution of the first game. Kotaku then moves on to talking about the European Dead Zone and asks what's cool about it. And Smith had a lot to say on this subject, and it's pretty interesting. What's cool about the layering of activity starts with the map. I'm not going to say that a map is some tremendous innovation. For us, the map is a product of a ton of work. This is not a core competency of our studio. This is a competency of professional and proficiency we've been building. The map is a fundamental element of building a layered suite of activities that come on top of that. Kotaku responds from saying by saying, from the map, you actually mean having a physical map. Smith says there's a map. From the map, you can track activities, adventures. You can track public events. Kotaku asks, can you fast travel? Smith says, yes. There is going to be some fast travel options that you'll unlock. One of the things we're trying to do in Destiny 2 is help players find the fun. Instead of finding the fun on Reddit, you'll find it in the game. Again, this is very interesting. It's the first time we found out that there's going to be fast travel. Uh, Smith is obviously really high on the fact that you'll have a physical map that you can see where you're at, where activities are in the world. It's something that was definitely missing from Destiny 1, and it goes to show that there's going to be ways to find things to do in the world of Destiny. He really wants to emphasize that the world of Destiny is going to be much richer and much more full. The The patrol spaces are going to have a ton of stuff going on, and you'll need that map to find what's going on and when it's happening. Kotaku moves on to guided games. Are guided games available for all types of raid? Just heroic raids? Just normal? So it says just normal activities. Kotaku follows up by saying, so heroic raids or challenge modes or stuff like that, you got to find your own group. And Smith says, yeah. I don't know exactly how the challenge mode layers are going to work here, but the normal tier activities will be guided games and the heroics will be find your own. So now we're talking about the guided games. The One of the biggest problems with Destiny, one of the biggest 
complaints about Destiny, especially at the beginning, was that the best content was locked behind having a group to play with. So solo players just couldn't access the raids, maybe the nightfalls. So this guided game stuff is going to help solo players find groups. But the very highest tier of activities, the heroic mode raids, will still be locked behind that barrier. Kotaku goes back to the map asking, what other things can I find on the map? Are there interesting things to explore? And this is where some stuff gets revealed by Smith. And I, I wonder, actually, if he was supposed to reveal this, we'll probably find out. Smith says, we hope so. You'll be able to go and find stuff to scan. We know Destiny players are always looking for excuses to spend time in the world. In The Taken King, we had some scannables that you could find in the world and learn about. In Destiny 2, we have way more than we've ever had. We also have Lost Sectors. There's going to be more events, and we have an event list called Silent, which is when a bunch of monsters just show up and start doing stuff. We have a weekly activity called a Flashpoint that we haven't talked about yet. The Flashpoint is a featured destination. And then there's this whole class of stuff that shows up when it's a Flashpoint that's unique. Treasure maps to go find, special monsters that show up. Kotaku says, so you guys are throwing some Diablo 3 in there. Smith says, I don't want to go so far as to say it's like Diablo 3. With Flashpoints, we wanted to have an opportunity each week to focus players on a single location where they can go solo and hang out and then get a super powerful reward from it, like the equivalent of a Nightfall reward. This is cool. This is the first time we've heard about Flashpoints, and it's going to be a soloable activity. It's going to be different each week. It's going to be a different location, and it's going to have Nightfall equivalent rewards. So whether that Nightfall equivalent rewards mean year one Nightfall rewards, like exotics, or if that means year two and three Nightfall rewards, like legendary ghosts, we don't know. But still, players, solo players will be rewarded for going to these flashpoints, exploring the world, finding a map, going to find some treasure, and getting a Nightfall-style reward, which I think is incredibly cool. Kotaku then goes on to say, are all zones going to be that layered style? And Smith says, yes, all four locations. Kotaku then asked about rank play not being in Destiny 2. And Luke Smith says, we're not doing ranked PvP. We do have an idea of something we might do. I don't want to commit to it here because I'm not sure it's going to happen. But if we don't get to it for September 6th, there will be some way of players showing off their prowess to other people, which is ultimately what a ranking system is. We are working on something. So I wish actually that Jason had followed up on this question because I kind of disagree with Smith. I mean, it's nice to have a way of showing your your progress in the Crucible. That's cool. But I think what players would like even more is two separate playlists. One that's more social and has, you know, just pure connection-based matchmaking. And one that feels like a ladder that's always kind of matching you up against people that are of your skill level or slightly higher. So you feel like you're constantly battling to move up this ranked system. I don't think that just having a emblem, for instance, that shows that, you know, I'm an elite, I'm an elite PVP player is quite the same thing. So I don't know if that's a misunderstanding of what players actually want on Bungie's side. I don't know if having an actual ranked playlist is just too much of an ask right now. But I do wish Kotaku had followed up on this because it is a very interesting idea. So again, I want to stress that the full article or the full interview is actually really interesting. And the context behind it is very interesting as well. Like I said before, they talk about the development of Destiny 2. They talk about the development of the Taken King. They talk about you know, family life for developers, the management structure, how much it's changed. It really is a fascinating interview. And with that context of Jason Schreer having broken those big news items around Destiny, uh, there's definitely some interplay between the two of them during the, during the interview that I think is really interesting to listen to. So I'll put a link to the description down below. Thank you guys for watching this video, though. I really do appreciate it. Hit that like button if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.